Uh, yeah. First off is implementing EEP 1185 to resolve .eth domains with DNS. Um, Mike, do you want to take it away? Sure. Hi, everybody. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll try presenting now if I can. Um, so, can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, just to give you some background of why we did this, uh, is um, so I work for Impervious, uh, which is a company that focuses on uh, Bitcoin and Handshake development. And Handshake is a fork of Bitcoin, which is a decentralized root zone for for the internet. So it's an alternative root zone to what uh, to ICANN, what ICANN has, and um, it's uh, it's uh, but it's a decentralized root zone. Uh, that's based on a fork of Bitcoin, so a proof of work blockchain. So, um, so we had a TLD, we had a top level domain on there, which is dot badass, and we wanted to create kind of a proof of concept for how you could create decentralized second level domains on a decentralized top level domain. Um, so, what we did is uh, we we were looking around and it. Uh, seemed like ENS was a, a great solution because it uh, supports decentralized second level domains. So we looked into that and it had pretty much everything that we needed except the, we didn't see DNS, um, you know, uh, it didn't seem like anybody was using it specifically for DNS. You know, most people are using it f from what, from what we could see, most people are using it for uh, like wallet address aliases or like, uh, linking directly to ipfs or something like that so but there was there is that um like for example if you look in the contract for a pub the public resolver contract we noticed this like set dns records so there was support for it in that resolver contract but it didn't seem like from what we could see nobody was using it for that so we decided to create uh that for for our uh, decentralized second level domains on dot badass, so um, we created this plugin which you can find at impervious inc slash handover, which is uh, it's a plugin to HSD. HSD is the full full node uh, and DNS resolver for Handshake. Um, so it's a plugin to that which resolves. We we build it at first, you know, to resolve any ENS contracts so like that badass um, but it also works with dot eth uh, because dot eth is blacklisted on um, handshake so so the, the cool thing about this plugin is it not only does it resolve dot badass or any other handshake tld that uses ens it also resolves all dot eth names so for example i'm using it right now um, if you look at my Resolvers, I've set these up, and these are actually uh, public resolvers that run this plugin. So you guys could use it if if you wanted to try it out. I mean, don't count on them being up. I mean, we just kind of set it up for this. Uh, but um, if you want to find out where they are, you can if you go to badass.domains and click on this learn more. Um, there's an article which talks all about what we did, and it in in here it shows our these resolvers that we set up. So if you wanted to test it out, see what it's like to resolve .eth domains, you could just set set your uh, DNS resolvers for your system to that, and then you can resolve any um, eth name like this. For example, this is humbly.eth, and uh, you can see it's resolving here. Um, we, you can also do like dig humbly eth, and it brings back an A record. And this is all stored in the public resolver. Um, and and yeah, we uh, there's no way to do this from the manager from the, uh, the I'm I'm working on a, a pull request to to the manager for this to, uh, and I because uh, we want to do it for our uh, badass domains we don't we don't have it set up yet for that so um, but yeah until that pull request so you can actually set your DNS on, on the uh, ENS manager. The only way to do it is directly, like for example, through EtherScan. You could you could do it directly through here. And the the way to do it is um, uh, 
well, first you have to get the name hash. So like, so th basically what I'm doing right here is I'm running node and I am including this fenst name hash uh, library and then I'm getting the, the name hash for humbly.eth eth, eth. So you, you would put that, for, so your name, you would get that string, you'd put it in the top part right there. And then um, for, uh, um, and then you would need to uh, set the DNS. And so this uses DNS wire, um, uh, DNS wire format. So you have to encode this. Um, so this is what I used actually for this is like, so you can include this BNS library, which is like part of Handshake, but you can, um, you can include that into Node.js and then just use this one method wire.record from JSON and then include your wire record, um, DNS wire record format there and then encode it. And then you get this string and you just have to add, uh, and then you can just put it here with dot zero X in front of it. And so that's how you can set the DNS data for your name, for any ETH name or badass name um, until you know we make it easier and add it to the manager, which I've been planning to do. I just haven't got around to it yet. I mean, we're I, I'm part way through it, but um, so uh, yeah, that's uh, that I think <laughs> covers that, everything. And I, uh, if there's any questions for anyone, just let me know. Cool. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, about a minute for questions. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, next presentation is a name resolved for the distributed web. Uh, Thibaut, do you want to take it away? Yes, happy to. Um, thanks, Nick. Just time for me to share. And look. Uh, great. Um, oh. And down screen, and so you should be able to all see my screen a couple of seconds. Um, and now that should be good. Great. So name resolve the distributed web. So basically, that how um, we set up um, at Cloudflare, like for research purposes, um, like um, the new version for um, East dot link, um, and how how um, we're, we're using it. So I'm just gonna like go over like quickly how we access the distributed web uh, with ENS. Then um, discuss about like the architecture of the name resolver. So like, what is it? Um, like um, how the HTTPS proxy um, for e -stop link is set up. Um, and then how we preserved the ENS integration um, with, with also project. Um, and then I conclude. So first of all, who am I? Um, so I'm a research engineer at Cloudflare. Um, I work on some distributed web project, um, IPFS, um, Ethereum, and ENS um, in this case. Um, also, like, like Croissant. So like, if, if at some point we meet in the future, definitely Croissant is like always a, a good place to start. So first of all, um, accessing the distributed web. So accessing the distributed web works first with like um, universal resource locators. So like for IPFS, um, you would have um, IPFS uh, slash slash with like a uh, a long IPFS hash uh, with a CID. Um, you could have like that hash uh, be like a constant because like that would change every time you have a new content. So you can have like an IPNS hash, uh, which would be constant, but the hash is still not very readable. Um, so then like you can use um, um, a DNS link with like DNS, DNS name. So for instance, for um, a website I've set up for tests, so like you can go to tmo.east.link on HTTPS and that works. Um, and finally, you can also use um, ENS to have like some um, decentralized like version um, for for storing, and the record will be stored in ENS, and you will still be accessing the same website. So ideally, why what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to have like some local verifiable data, and that's why like ENS and IPFS are very good for that because you, you can verify both the name and the content you receive. You have built-in history, um, thanks to ENS um, smart contracts. And finally, you have no single trust anchor. So for DR resolution, you have multiple ways to do that. Um, the first way is to like maintain, um, uh, like have a local process to maintain the state. Um, and usually that's rather hard. You need to have like an Ethereum node, an IPFS node, um, and things to verify, it's like rather hard. You can also use like a plugin such as MetaMask, um, which does that for you. Um, and which like would use like the contracts API um, to to get the proper states. It will get some control over your web traffic, 
um, and that's not something we were looking for. Finally, the three ways we will focus on is the use of a proxy. And so like that's what is.link is doing. So you happen dot link to any ease address, um, such as like uniswap.ease, and you get uniswap.ease.link, which gives you a Uniswap website. A fourth way is to use a custom DNS resolver. Um, as Mike just presented before, you can like use a custom DNS resolver to get the um, uh, the, the name info, and that's how we, we preserve the integration um, that were existing with ENS. And I'll go more for, I'll, I'll go in detail uh, right after. So in the end, what does that look like? Um, I have tibmo.east.link, which is a website I can access directly in my web browser with HTTPS. And I also have an IPFS gateway. So here in this case, it's Cloud IPFS gateway. Um, I can access my .east um, domain, which is tibmo.east. So how did that work under the hood? So the name resolver need to have two services. We, we, we saw we have east.link, and we need to have a DNS of HTTPS. So we can resolve like all the .east domain with the IPFS gateway. It is set up to integrate multiple tools. So it integrates like with an IPFS gateway, so we can resolve the content. It integrates with an Ethereum gateway, so we can resolve the ENS names. And finally, we deploy that um, at Cloudflare's Edge uh, with like Cloudflare Worker. So like that allows us to like integrate all those tools and orchestrate them. Finally, uh, we want to be able to use custom host name. So we want to have like staging environment, but also um, production environment. And so like one of the production environment is east.link. The first service is the HTTPS proxy. And so we want to get a secure traffic, which runs under east.link. So how does that work? When you go on the website um, and you go to timur.east.link, you will send a nay DNS query. Um, to a DNS resolver for tibmo.east.link. Um, tibmo.east.link um, uh, gets to a DNS resolver, and that DNS resolver is uh, maintained by the DNS team who will like retrieve tibmo.east.link from the name resolver. Then the name resolver will get um, tibmo.east.link with uh, the the um, the tibmo.east record, the A record that you got from the, the, the resolver. And finally, the tibmo.east.link A record is, is returned, and that A record matches an IPFS gateway. This way, now that we have um, the IP address, that we, we know the IP address to contact, um, we send um, tibmo.east.link HTTP request to that um, IP address, so to an IPFS gateway. That IPFS gateway will get um, the DNS link, so the content to be retrieved for tibmo.east.link. And finally, tibmo.east.link CID is retrieved using DNS. So the flow is like as follow, maybe like in diagrams. So you get like, to get the IP address, you send a name record to a DNS resolver, which will contact the name resolver for tibmo.east.link, which will send an IPFS gateway IP address we return the IP address to the main user. And finally, we make an HTTP request to that IPFS gateway. From that IPFS gateway, we have like that HTTP request which is coming in. We will need to do like a resolution to get the content. So we'll do like exactly the same, but with a text record to the DNS resolver, which gets to the name resolver, which, which, which reads the content from um, ENS. Once we have the content, we return it back as a DNS record to the DNS resolver, which forwards it back to the IPFS gateway, which is now able to retrieve the content, which gets back to Alice. Next thing is like, how does that preserve the ENS integration? Uh, and mainly like ENS integration with IPFS, which we did not want to break. Um, so we wanted to upgrade the service, not break it. So what does the ENS integration looks like in IPFS? Um, we have two um, constants, which are declared in all IPFS nodes, um, and that might change the future. But for now, we have two constants, which are um, the .eastTLD, and we have the link, which is um, the top domain, which is added. And basically, if like any domain requested has a string, which is .east, we will append the uh, .linkTLD. So instead of resolving um, tibmo.east, we will res resolve tibmo.east.link. So it matches the regular DNS namespace. 
If I take an example, um, Alice, which is like a conscious user, runs an IPFS node on her machine. Um, and she wants to resolve tmu.es on her machine on her local node. So what she would request is like um, localhost, which is the um, IPFS gateway, slash IPNS, slash tmu.es. Um, her node will request a DNS link for tmu.es, um, and that passes by like a dot link. Then the resolver will get the CID using ENS. And finally, um, we will craft like um, uh, the within like a text record, uh, we will craft the the answer with the CID for associated to tmu.es. In a diagram, it's like exactly the same part as the second diagram we, we saw before on how to access a dot, east dot link website. Alice will contact like a gateway, which is running on localhost, which will make a text record to get a DNS link to a DNS resolver. The DNS resolver will query the name resolver and will go back to the IPFS gateway with a CID that is stored in DNS, retrieve that CID and get back to Alice with the content. And so this way, all IPFS um, gateways are still able to resolve um, content of, um, of ENS um, in, in, in that context. So finally, some, some notes. Um, like with this upgrade, we hope to better serve the distributed web like by offering um, HTTPS to like all um, subdomain of ENS um, and like um, still maintaining existing integration. Um, um, a great thing we're like interested in is having an interface between the current web infrastructure and experimental protocols. So should it be with like DNS um, or should it be with um, uh, current like HTTPS and like current namespace? Um, this is like really allow a room for experiment um, without like colliding or breaking um, current standard. Finally, because we have um, like a, D um, a DNS resolver, like that provides an API to query ENS, ENS information from any browser. And so that's very powerful. Finally, what we would lead on is like um, have ideally some local verifiability of the content, both of um, IPFS as, and of ENS, which like extend uh, what you can do with DNS. And that's it. Any question? I think I still have some time. No, I don't have any. Anymore well, I have a very so. quick question. How easily could you extend this to work with CS Skynet hashes in addition to IPFS? Yeah, um, so that's something we can do. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, that's something we could do. Um, okay, because we just added support for CS Skynet hashes to our content record. Okay, so, yeah, definitely something we, we will look at. Okay, great. And I think I'll leave it to Samuele, uh, if I'm correct, uh, from Flick. Yeah, I think we, we were running two or three minutes late at the start, so there's time for maybe one or two more questions if anyone has them. Otherwise, uh, beautiful yeah, demo. Um, I'm wondering, um, is there, do you think there will be an opportunity to resolve just .eth names over 1.1.1.1 in the future? No, <laughs> no, no. See, so like, so just to be clear, it's like a distinct resolver. Um, and so we're playing it for, Room for experiment, and we're experimenting for now with dot .es, and most likely, uh, like we would like to experiment with the extension of dot .es and DNS integration. Um, that would be great to see, like what um, properties and verifiability we will get out of these. Uh, we're not planning on like extending um, non ICANN domain to to one one one. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next up is uh, Samuel, I again hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, uh, from Fleek, uh, talking about uh, Fleek, the gateway to the D-Web. Uh, take it away. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, so now you should see my screen. Yes, it's working. So the title of the talk is ENS on Fleek, the gateway drug to the D-Web. So in this talk, we're going to talk a bit about like what is Fleek, how we integrate ENS, and why it's a gateway drug to the D-Web. But um, beyond that, we'll also look deeper about some problems we had recently and a fix that a solution that uh, we uh, found to that. So it's going to be a bit deeper uh, for that, that part. 
So first, let's just talk about like what is Fleek in the first place. So what we really known for is like a uh, some sort of Netlify, but that uses IPFS. So the idea is that it's this very easy flow that you can connect your GitHub account and your repository and publish your site to IPFS. And we make it uh, like as simple as possible. And that's why we say like, it's like a gateway drug because the flow is very similar to Netlify that um, it, it's not difficult to uh, publish it. And as a bonus, you have your site on IPFS. Um, we have a simple CI CD flow, which means that how it works is you just connect your repository, you push some commits to your project, project and automatically Fleek will build the project and update your uh, your site. We also like have a CDN, which means that even though it is on, on, on IPFS, you, we still have that Web2 uh, component that um, we make sure that the site is accessible very easily and, and fast. And also, and the, the, that, the purpose of this talk, which is um, it's, we can connect your site on ENS. In fact, it's one of the first features that we added to Fleek because with IPFS, you can decentralize the content of the site, but with ENS, you can also de uh, decentralize the naming of the site itself. And so how it works is uh, first you connect your site to, uh, EN uh, to ENS on the Fleek user interface, and I will show you uh, afterwards how it works. Um, and then once it's done, that is done, you don't do, have to do anything. Like we make sure that your um, content hash on ENS is in sync with the latest commit with your site. And also, if you go on fleekhq.eth, we are ourselves using that integration to push, push our, our site uh, on ENS. So how it works. So uh, for the setup, is it's like one transaction. Pretty much you uh, generate a transaction and that gives Fleek the right to um, update your content hash. And so that is integrated with our CICD pipeline. So normally is you uh, push a uh, commit to GitHub, this will build on Fleek. Fleek then generates a IPFS hash or CID. And then at that, po at that point, uh, um, we actually update the ENS record with that new hash. And so that's what we mean also by gateway drug. Like when it's set up, you, you kind of forget about it. So let, I just want to show you a quick demo, how, how simple it is. So here I got the site. Um, let me just uh, remove this domain. So after the site that is deployed, you can go on the settings uh, on ENS. Then you, you, you add ENS. You type in your domain. So I, do, I got this domain here. I verify it, then I add it. And the last step is gonna be one Ethereum uh, transaction. So in this case, I'm gonna use MetaMask. Now, this site, I already had updated the, the controller, therefore it's just a signature, but otherwise we will add to actually uh, make a transaction. But then it's pending, and what in, it's uh, it's updated on our our backend, then it's uh, is done. And at that point, that's it. You can kind of forget about it. So pretty uh, pretty simple to use. Let me go back to the presentation. So that was a very quick demo. So like you can see, it's pretty easy. But there is a problem. So this screenshot here is uh, from our our um, Slack channel. So what we did, we we uh, created a simple integration so that each time that we uh, make an update on ENS, we show a, the, the transaction on our on our chat, and also the amount of it, of uh, gas price that of gas that it cost. Because in effect, each time that the user makes a new commit on his GitHub repo, it's going to generate a new hash, and that hash we uh, we, what we do is we update the ENS record, which is the, the, the Ethereum transaction. 
And the gas cost is covered by us. It's kind of a part of our service. And we see this accumulate and it's really cool because we saw that this feature is very popular. A lot of people use it. Like every day it has a ton of that. But there is a, 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 an issue is that gas, gas prices keep going up. So like um, uh, in the past, it was like one transaction, like maybe like less than a dollar. But as the gas prices go up, it's like $20, $50, $6. And we're not sure if there is an end to this because the on Ethereum, the gas prices are determined by the free market. So maybe the free market decides that $100 is the right amount or $200 is the right amount. And we have no control over that. Therefore, it's like a very dangerous game that is being played with this. So we need to find some solution. And test, and test us at Fleek, like we see the gas prices <laughs> go up and like, oh, this is fine. But uh, we got a solution. So our solution is to use IPNS. So first, just a small side note, like the real solution, it's layer two. Layer two is ideal. But even with layer, layer two, the way we're doing it uh, right now, uh, can be improved, it's a bit inefficient, even if we had a layer two. Like ideally is this solution that I will show you and simultaneously layer two. So I said here, the solution is IPNS. So just a quick, what is IPFS versus IPNS? Um, IPFS CIDs or the hash is immutable. So anytime you make a new update to your site on Fleek, a new, uh, hash is generated. And if you make another update, a new hash is generated. And every time a new hash is generated, in order to keep the site up to date, we need to create a new transaction to update your site. And that's why it, it, like, it costs a lot of gas because people do a lot of updates, just as, as it goes in the web development. And because there are a lot of updates, it's a lot of transaction and the, the cost pile up very fast. Meanwhile, there's IPNS, which is uh, related to IPFS, but it's, it's not a hash. It's uh, like a public private key pair. And the idea is that uh, you sign uh, what is the, the uh, IPFS hash or CID that is the most current to be used with your site. And the actual address of IPNS is just the public key. Therefore, it never changes. You have this string that never changes, but you send to the IPFS network the new hash. And so that's a good solution for us because now if we were to, in the record, just put IPNS, that is one transaction done only once. And from there, anytime there is a new update to a site, all we have to do is sign, uh, it just update the, the most recent hash associated with this IPNS. So with IPFS CIDs, it's like every update, we, uh, we update the ENS record and the transaction, but with IPNS, we do it only once. And so that's like a good solution for this. But then you might be like, oh, wait, hold up here. Like why not just use IPNS in the first place? Why waste like all this gas and and uh, and then later like complain about hey, the, the gas prices are, are very high? So let's just rewind a little bit at when Fleek was born. Uh, it was in early 2020. We released the Fleek platform, and as soon as we released Fleek, the Fleek platform, the first thing that we did was we want ENS. But uh, at that time, I was kind of investigating the solution of using IPNS. And then there was, a, but there was a few issue, um, like this one, like IPNS, like in when I did I tested this is in uh, February and March, it was very very slow. Like resolving it is like ten plus seconds, which is not acceptable. And for the cost customers, it's like you're gonna integrate ENS, but then the resolution takes forever. It's gonna be disappointing for them. And also is that. Uh, people that uses ENS didn't did not use IPNS. Like for example, um, I was at, at that time at, one year ago. I was actually digging inside the code of MetaMask to see if MetaMask 
uh, was able to resolve the, the IPNFs. And I, I saw that in the code, it was like, if IPFS, then it resolves, and that's it. There was no case for IPNF, it was not even uh, resolvable. And also in the ENF front end at that time, you could not even put an IPNF address. That's a new thing that was added recently. But things changed really quickly. Uh, a few months after that, there was Go IPFS 0.5.0, which was like a ton of updates uh, to IPFS. Like everything got way faster, like uh, adding, providing, and everything. But in particular, IPNS got 30 times to 40 times faster. Like that's really a game changer for using IPNS with ENS because now the resolution can be done in a reasonable amount of time. And also we saw that like MetaMask now resolves IPNS and also it's, gonna be, it's got added to the ENS front end. So that's good. Of course, MetaMask, there's a bug right now with IPNS, but I opened the GitHub issue, but in te technically they're resolving that. So some updates in the horizon. Um, the, the big update to want to do is to use IPNS in instead of IPFS CIDs for our ENS integration. The cool thing is that existing users won't be affected because uh, since we are the controllers, we can just change the IPFS hash for an IPNS address. And from there, all new users can um, uh, use IPNS. So like nothing changes for the users. They don't have to pay more or anything. It's kind of a win-win for everybody. And also um, soon we're gonna support more top-level domains. Right now we can only use .eth but um, it, when, once we, we push a new uh, upgrade to production, uh, it is going to be a XYZ and create either this week or early next week. So thank you for listening. So I urge you to go on Fleek.co and you know deploy your site uh, using Fleek and you and connect it with your ENS domain. So thank you for listening, guys. Thank Great. You thank you very on. much. Hey, quick question on the other ENS names thing. Um, don't hard code certain names, right? So because ENS, the name space on it is constantly expanding, I would say just like if somebody puts in a dot separated name, like check to see if it is on ENS, right? And then go from there rather than hard coding certain top level domains. Yeah, we are, we are integrating the uh, e e e query to the graph that uh, fetches all the uh, available domain on ENS. So it should, should be uh, uh, expanding with new domains. Great, and Nick is asking something here. Oh, no, we'll, we'll, we can talk about that at a band since we're, we're running low on time. Okay. All right, uh, thank you very much. Um, next up, uh, Gnosis app ENS integration. I'm not sure who was presenting that. Uh, Makoto, are you still here? Yeah, that's right. supposed to be Richard. Ah. Yeah, Richard is in. Cool, take it away. Cool. So let me share my screen. This one. So yeah, basically, I'm working on the Gnosis Safe team, and um, I think yeah, at some point we also talked with the whole ENS team about it. And obviously, we ourselves, I think you can see my screen now, right? So we Gnosis itself has quite a lot of ENS domains, and like not a lot, not as many as this 1,000 somebody said before. But for our own products, we do use ENS domains, and we um, commonly manage these in Gnosis Safe. And this was quite a hassle to manage them with Gnosis Safe, like um, because of the nature of the multi-signature of Gnosis Safe, and also because to connecting this web interface to the um, ENS app was quite tricky by times, and Therefore, for us, it was important because the safe, they have this functionality of safe apps where you can, where we try to bring this a little bit closer together um, that we would love to be able to use the ENS app as such a safe app. And so I, at some point there was even a grant where we were working together with the ENS team and trying to bring this together or we're thinking about a grant. And so in, in the process of this, we tried to come up with a way how to make this easier. And we actually tried to, um, like extend common patterns such as web3 model and um, onboard js and also make it easier that you use if you use um ethers that you can just um get a 
safe Gnosis safe app compatible eSERPs provider so that you can run it basically inside that you can reuse your existing safe app inside the Gnosis safe web interface. Um, so yeah, I created a small PR for this because for um, for me ENS was one of the most important apps um, that you can use with a safe because if you're an organization and have a safe app, this um, besides exchanges, this is the most or like one of the most interesting use cases. And therefore, ENS was also the one, first place where we tried this out and then put it into a production use case. And so you can, so last week we, together with Makoto, we tested this and um, made this production ready. And you can see this is now connected on Rinkeby. Let me know if it's too small, then I can try to zoom in. Um, but yeah, in general, this is my Rinkeby address. And if I can, I can basically take just exactly the same URL. And currently it's not a default app. We, we are working on this, but you can paste it in here and you can add this as a safe app. And then you will see that it starts loading the app, but now it actually is connected to the safe by default and not to the MetaMask anymore, even so it's my MetaMask. And then I can start using and managing my accounts as uh, in the same way. Um, so if I would, you can see here, I have a couple of test domains registered. I can go here and transfer these test domains or reset the domain name, or I can even like, um, let's take the test. Um, you can say for the test, we can claim it. This will then generate um, the, it will, push it to our Zognosis safe web interface where you can then push it and commit a, oops, that was not that nice. It kicked me out. That's not what I wanted. That's why you don't do live demos. It's now I need to refresh one second. So it created the transaction, um, but it closed the app for me, which was not so nice because my MetaMask is connected and we don't allow this interaction if you're not an owner. But what you can see basically now that I tried to claim the transaction that it generated an address, like we normally would try to decode this, but since the test, uh, the claiming the test URL is not an hour, like it's not uh, verified in our backend. So therefore this one doesn't work, but now, I don't know why MetaMask is disconnecting me. Now I can take a second owner and verify and like confirm this transaction. And the goal of this is that it makes it easier for organizations that use the Gnosis safe and have ENS domains that they can manage the ENS domains. And um, therefore can easily use their saves together with the ENS app and um, yeah, to bring this forward and empowering more, like more organizations to have ENS addresses. Yeah, in general, the safe app, it's completely fully compatible with all the features with the safe. So whatever you do, you can do the same way. Yeah, this was just a short demo. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, that would be it for now. Thank you very much. Any questions from anyone? Uh, this is a bit more of the comment that uh, the there's a DAO newly formed called People Pleaser DAO who jointly purchased People Pleasers X times Y equal K uh, NFT uh, Uniswaps uh, NFT art and. Uh, they are one of the first to set the reverse record using the Gnosis app integration. So thank you to for reach out for like you know making it integrated on time. Cool. All right. Thank you. Uh, and then the uh, Next uh, and last session is uh, from Alpress, a uh, self-governing publication platform. Uh, Mohammed, do you want to take it away? Yep. Uh, 
Let me shave my screen. Um, it says my browser cannot share my screen. That's interesting. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. Um, is it possible just to switch to another browser? <laughs> Yes, I'm on Mac. Uh, probably it's uh, some sort of setting issue. Yes. All right, then. Uh, Mohammed, uh, which are you saying maybe it's uh, Google's privacy setting? Is yes, I, I, I'm just I'm just checking for that. It's uh, yeah, it's probably that. Interestingly, no, there is nothing in about my browser here. So uh, I think it's going to be like quite fast to switch instead. Well, may I share my screen and you just navigate from the URL if the, something possible? Yes, now, now, now it should be all right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for mess. Oh God, like Mac is complete disaster. Did we just lose Mohammed? Okay. Ah, you're me. Yeah, this time I'm pretty sure it's all right because it's required me to refresh. Sorry, restart the page, uh, and now it should be all right, I guess. I'm just sharing my screen. You should be able to see it now. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. Perfect. Uh, sorry for the mess. <laughs> so uh, I'm Mohammed from uh, Almonitz. Uh, if you don't know about Almonitz, I want to show you just quickly. We are uh, decentralized. Uh, we are we are we are doing a decentralized website directory and we are keeping all the ns names under this under this uh d websites uh, it's also the d website itself uh based on I, uh, ens and ipfs and uh, like you can find all the ns names in here and you can search for them and like yeah like there are a lot of people creating uh, the d websites uh, especially nowadays, like uh, with a simple example, yeah, as you can see. So uh, what I want to tell you today about, it's uh, Alpress. It's our one of uh, our NIV uh, project that we were working on it like uh, for a long time. Uh, it's a self-governing publication platform simply, and we are using like several different technologies to create this. The, one of them is ENS. We we are using ENS as an identity, and also as a like as a uh, decentralized website URL, and the IPFS that like the we store everything about the publications, and we are, we are using DAO for the management of this uh, product. Uh, the Alpress is currently uh, on testnet, uh, and you can simply reach out with uh, alpress.t.eth. And the reason that we have T before ETH is it's on uh, testnet. And the uh, only way you can use this uh, domain, uh, that, sorry, TLD is, uh, you should have our own extension, which is resolving ENS names in any browser. 
and it has a feature that you can enable ENS on any test nets, uh, actually currently on Rinka by an Robston, if you are working on something if on if, or if you are creating a new product. Uh, okay. E so unable to see screen? Okay, I can see it now. Thank you. Oh, all right, all right. All right. So yeah, as I said, uh, like if you are if you are developing something, of course you can test locally, like by uh, using the ENS contracts on on uh, your local environment, like uh, the truffle, etc., the gamut. But uh, if you want to test the test on production, then especially nowadays it's really hard because uh, you have to pay gas on the mainnet. So the easiest way to test uh, the decentralized websites are, is uh, with that way, simply we provide the, the testnet option and you can uh, use the ENS on the testnet. Oh, okay. So uh, is that all right now? Yes, better. All right, all right. So and uh i want to do a quick uh, demo about alpress as i said alpress is uh, a self-governing publication platform simply you can think of it like a blog but in a decentralized manner so there is no central point uh, all the content all the resources are fetched from ipfs and uh, we created our own nodes to uh, keep those information alive and like anyone can have those nodes running and uh, to make it available for more um, like for better life period for this uh, information for the for the for the art articles you write and how it looks like simply if you have MetaMask and if you have oh, just a second uh, I need to of course unload my MetaMask. If you have MetaMask and if you have some ETH inside of it, of course, uh, just because it's on testnet, it's a, it's a ring by uh, ETH, uh, ETH. So you just press login register. It's just one button. And if you have an account already, it will just uh, go to the management page and you will see uh, your articles that you already written. And while we post about like Alpress testnet going public, uh, we had a blog about it, and we decided to blog inside the product, so it's going to be like eating our own uh, dog food. So, as you can see, uh, the whole blog about like Alpress uh, uh, testnet goes public. It's just uh, comes from the IPFS uh, in a decentralized manner, as I said. And uh, to create uh, a blog, you just press, and we have like our own editor inside. And you just write uh, your article. Like I can write something here. Uh, uh, and like, just uh, change all the like everything as as you wish, and. Even like more options. And press publish, and it will ask Metamask to confirm this transaction. And then it will update and create your article. Of course, it takes some time. The current biggest issue is, is uh, of course, the gas prices. But if ENS goes uh, L2, uh, it will also solve our issue here. Uh, we don't need to uh, pay for each uh, article. Uh, there is also a consideration about IPNS, uh, as uh, Samuel mentioned. Uh, so we can we can also use like we actually thought about like how we can use IPNS instead of uh, writing 
each uh, hash into the I, I, uh, ENS. So as you can see, the R transaction is passed, and now we have our first block on uh, address. So yeah, it's like pretty much this, and I want to show you how the like profiles look like when you create uh, a name uh, based on ENS. And my name is MDT that uh, MDT, and it's like MDT that Alpris that ETH is my handle. And unfortunately, due to slowness of IPFS, uh, time to time, it takes some time to reload, uh, load, uh, load the profiles. But it just uh, happens in the first first pass. And after that, it's all right. Um. All right, it seems like it's still unable to fetch. Uh, okay, I, th I think I'm going to skip this for now. Maybe maybe later we can try again. Uh, I just want to show one more, like couple of things more like how we are creating an account here. And if I want to create a new account, I'm just going to the alt press and press, and it asks me to reserve my handle, and I'm writing my ENS name, and it checks from contract if this handle is uh, taken or available. For example, this one is going to say, it's, of course, uh, taken already. So I want to create one for the ENS. And let's have our logo here. And some description. And now we are signing up to the system. Yeah. And tada. We just registered, and we don't have any. Uh, due to we don't have any blog yet, it's just ask like open editor and write something, and we start blogging. And the rest, as you see previously, so that's it. Uh, Jack, I can't really see the screen. I think you still have occasion refresh issue. All right. Oh, so is it the same for everyone? I can see MDT. Uh, oh yeah, like this is this this is this is the profile how it looks like. I th I think it will be better if I can share the link with you. So for my profile, yeah. that I already wrote something, and it's just an IPFS address. You can go there and see uh, how it looks like from for, for the reader part. Cool. Thank you very much for the demo. Uh, yeah, so, sorry, I don't know what's the problem with my screen, but yeah, thank you, thank you, Tim. All right, I think that concludes the workshop then. Thank you very much for everyone uh, who came and everyone who presented. Uh, I hope it was productive and uh, I hope you'll join in on the uh, Discord and the discussion forums so we can continue our, our conversations further.